It's time to smile. It is. It's TNT. Good it's morning. that time again. Actually, it's good afternoon. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. good afternoon. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, a couple of things as we start. Very, very exciting news. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, people that are on our email list will get this information uh, mm -hmm. today, in fact. So um, our online presence is finally fixed. Yay! Yay! And it's, I'm not gonna lie to you, it's, uh, it's, it's excellent. Pretty good. It is, and the sound yeah. is excellent. Yeah. So it'll be a treat. And uh, again, the letter today that I'm sending you will give lots of uh, instruction and explanation, and so it's good. And then finally, Terry Bone is gonna be here this weekend. Good. So he's gonna be here Sunday, Sunday night, Monday night. He's doing a seminar on God's economy, yeah. uh, how to prosper in tough times. Mm. And uh, it is very good. Mm -hmm. So if you're from anywhere nearby, come to the service 10.30 Sunday mm -hmm. morning and then 6.30 Sunday night, 6.30 Monday night. All right. Mm -hmm. We're calling this today, Be Anxious for Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. So take her away, Tammy. Okay, so I was recently just kind of checking out news and seeing what's happening in the world. And, and I fell upon this article, and it's from the Toronto Star. And it's a survey done uh, about 1,003 adults. So, you know, it's a small number, but still but it's significant. A good, yeah, it's a, and, it's a good... Yeah, and they were across Canada, and it was conducted by the Centre of Addictions and Mental Health. And it's showing that women are experiencing higher rates of moderate to severe anxiety than men. 24% mm -hmm. of women surveyed said they feel anxious mm -hmm. and up to 19, fr up from 19% yeah. in July. Yeah, so it compared, is significantly higher. Yeah, compared to only 17% in men. And you had noticed, you had read that it was about, uh, you know, obviously, uh, the issue with children going back to school. Yeah, that and, yes, that was in September. It yeah, rose. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. that was. So again, factors that cause anxiety. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just showing that yeah. anxiety levels are up. That's yeah. the mm -hmm. that's kind of what caught my eye, and uh, the survey results also revealed that twenty seven percent of respondents with children under eighteen reported having moderate or severe anxiety. Right. While women are feeling more anxious, twenty two percent are reporting heavy episodic drinking. Yeah, this so is this, not, is a, this is not good. Kind of a coping mechanism. Yeah. Um, a metric, the CAMH, used in the survey to measure levels of substance abuse. Mm -hmm. While men reported a higher rate of heavy drinking, 28%. Yeah, that's, that's not good. That's hot. No, that's... Yeah. that's uh, and it's the abuse, really, is the yeah, issue. Yeah. Okay. Overall, one in four Canadians, or 25%, is reporting incidents of recent heavy episodic drinking since the pandemic began. A trend wow. that doctors say is alarming. Yeah. Up from 19% in 2018. Right. In September, 25% of the respondents said they fear catching the virus. It's funny, eh? Compared to 20% in July. So we're up in, in September since we were in July. Right. And people are feeling very stressed, this doctor said, Dr. David Gratzer, a psychiatrist with the um, Center of Addictions and Mental Health. And he said the, re the survey for. results and added they're reflective of his own patient's struggles. Right. So he's, he's even seen this with his own patients. Exactly. Um, and then he says this, which this is, is so key. Yeah. He says, many are picking coping mechanisms that may haunt them in the future. He said, like alcohol and cannabis. Yeah, the new legal. So they're picking, um, yeah, they're picking things that are um, kind of numbing the anxiety, but not really dealing with it. But anyway, so exactly. so I thought that was very interesting and I, I wanted to just bring light to it because uh, just this is a side note that we've noticed um, even in our own, uh, uh, what would you call it, vocation, ministry, right? There have been uh, news coming out of pastors um, ending their lives. That's, um, yeah. Recently in the summertime, I think it was the end of summer, we heard of a pastor's wife who struggled with with uh, hormone imbalance and mental illness. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And she ended her life as well. That's and tough. it just, it breaks my heart. It saddens me that people mm -hmm. and even uh, Christians are feeling that hopelessness. So mm -hmm. how much more are people mm -hmm. that don't have that hope mm -hmm. are feeling? Yeah. And I myself have felt my anxiety rise mm -hmm. and to what's happening in the world today. Uh, we were recently on holidays. Call it that. And uh, yeah, it was or, good, Ta though. or as Taven would say, visiting, not holidays. And there were times when I was overtaken with anxious thoughts. Mm -hmm. They would just, it was almost like and a, a tsunami or a wave, yeah. just would crash over me. And I couldn't, I couldn't uh, stop it. It just was there. Mm. And, um, but I had to, I recognized it and I had to just kind of pull myself in and, um, and pray talk to Jesus and to get my emotions yeah. and get my thoughts under control. So not let yeah. them just go crazy. Yeah. I had to bring it in I had, and, and just kind of center myself and, um, with Jesus and yeah. just, kind and of you can just, do that though. Yeah, I can. Right. Cause, Cause Jesus you help me and help my thoughts, help me, uh, not, uh, get yeah. away on this. So true. A uh, couple of thoughts, and then I'm going to give you a second with my story. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there is external issues that cause anxiety, mm -hmm. and obviously COVID is one of those things mm -hmm. that is causing anxiety. Mm -hmm. But equally, what is the issue is um, it's eternal, it's internal things that get exacerbated or accelerated by external things. Mm -hmm. And COVID is certainly one of those things. Mm -hmm. So this is my thought. In other words, COVID makes things come to the surface. They sure do. Right? Yeah. And uh, we mm -hmm. kind of, we need to take that as a positive. Yeah. Um, do some inventory. Exactly. Yeah. And that's exactly what I did. Yeah. Um, if you didn't have good coping mechanisms and a good mental health plan mm -hmm. prior to COVID, uh, guess what? COVID's going to throw you. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like what you said is that you've, you've had that plan. Mm -hmm. So you didn't go into... No, I didn't. You spin brought it, it back. Drive. You right. pulled it back. Yeah. And, um, but uh, hopefully, again, a positive from COVID is that it forces us into good coping mechanisms mm -hmm. and to a good mental health plan. Mm -hmm. And that's really my takeaway. So here's my story. Back a few years ago, I found myself anxious and struggling with depression. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Mm -hmm. And it would happen and then it would go, and then it would happen and it would go. And I started doing inventory. I started doing um, my own introspective in inventory. Mm -hmm. And I noticed, oh, that happened this year. Oh, okay. I remember that? Oh, that was then. The, oh, yeah, that was then. And year mm -hmm. after year, about four years or five years in a row, it was in November. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what is going on? Um, and the seasons change and it's yes, darker. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. The sun isn't shining as much. Right. Yeah. So, yes, there's probably a seasonal, you know, they call it seasonal affective disorder. So sad. that was sad, yes. And sad. <laughs> it was sad. Yeah. And, uh, but here's the difference is that I owned it. I wasn't in mm -hmm. denial. Right. I wasn't groveling or in self pity. I owned it. But then you fortify yourself there, mm -hmm. right? Um, if, if you find, for me, November, I, the next year, finally after I realized, it was like, okay, all right, I'm going to pull this thing in mm -hmm. and um, I'm going to fortify and pray um, and be mindful. Mm -hmm. Be aware of uh, that. Yeah, be mindful. So a couple of quotes and then we're going to finish with scripture. Mm -hmm. um, anxiety is having to remind yourself that being afraid of things going wrong isn't the way to make things go right. True. Yeah. And True. How's that working for you? Yeah. So, and uh, someone that my mom really enjoyed years ago was Dr. Wayne Dyer. He says, peace is the result of retraining your mind to process life as if it was rather than the way you think it should be. So retrain your mind um, with how life is yeah. as opposed to how you would want life to be. Or you think it should, should be. be. Yeah. And then I thought, you know what that is? That's the serenity prayer. Mm. That is the serenity prayer. Mm -hmm. um, okay, well, let's go right. Let's uh, let's go right to the real solution. Okay. And uh, yeah, we found it, of course, obviously in Philippians four. It's fantastic. Yeah. It says, "Don't worry about anything. Mm -hmm. Pray about everything. 
Tell God what you need and thank him, it's gratitude, mm -hmm. for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And right. this is the, tra uh, the yeah. Passion Translation. Yeah. This says it so well. It's so cool. Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout the day. Offering your faith-filled request before God. That's so good. Overflowing, overflowing gratitude. gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will make the answers known to you through Jesus Christ. That's excellent. So keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real, honorable and admirable, beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind, wow. and fasten your thoughts, fasten your thoughts Lock in. on every glorious work of God, praising him always, always acknowledging him. Huh. And that's again, Philippians 4, 6 to 9. Yeah. And then the last one we'll leave you with. This is so good. This again is from the Passion Translation from 1 Peter 5, 7. Load upon him your ever, every anxiety, for he is always watching over you with tender care. Yeah. So that's your reminder for today. Yeah. Load upon him every anxious thought, mm -hmm. every anxiety, and he's always watching you yeah. with his loving Kindness, right, tender kindness, tender care. Yeah, it's so, so true. That's what we leave yeah. here today. Peter uh, nailed it. Mm -hmm. So the scripture there that was, of course, uh, Philippians four forty seven. Yeah, and First Peter five seven. Now those friends mm -hmm. are good coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, where is it? There is. Oh yes, there is a good mental health plan. Mm -hmm. Is what Paul and Peter told us. Yep. And uh, so, yeah. have an awesome day. Be blessed. Down. Exactly. Yep. And Amen. we'll see you Sunday, hopefully. Okay. Bye.